Welcome to Walk in the Light with Pastor Ben Thomas, lead pastor of Queen's Church of God, New York. In this teaching, we hope that you will have an encounter with God and discover your purpose in life by this practical teaching of our pastor. You are welcome to call us to the number on the screen for our prayer. If you like this teaching, you will be able to get connect with Pastor Ben Thomas through our website at www.qcog.org or www.benthomas.tv. Let's join the teaching of our pastor which is recorded live from Queen's Church of God, New York. Thank you. Life or my friend, wait for his timing. God will not delay and he come at the right time. Lazarus was dead and before he was dead, uh, when he was sick, his uh, uh, sisters uh, sent for Jesus. Bible says Jesus did not come. He just waited or two uh, miles away from that place. Jesus could easily walk there, but he decided not to go. My friends, there are times in our life we have prayed for many things. We ask for many things in my life and your life. Ask for a breakthrough. God, I need a, I need to see a deliverance in this particular situation. I am blind. I am waiting. I don't know what to do my future. My, my, my friend, my counsel is to you. He is fast and pray. Sit in the presence of God. Confess your sin. Set aside all the distractions. Sit in the presence of God. Read the word of God and confess your sin and get right with the God. And wait patiently. He will come and he will deliver. I will not delay. He come. And it is his promise. He will not. He is not a man to lie. And he will keep his promise. And he wanted to deliver you. Do not doubt God. Wait patiently for God. I want to call your attention back to the passage I read to you. Chapter 9, Book of Acts. Poor and intricate man. Poor and dead man. A sword who is waiting for God to work in his life. God told Saul, Ananias will come, lay hands on you, and he will pray, and you will see. Jesus could do without Ananias. Jesus could do that deliverance. Many times, a deliverance doesn't take place because we are not willing to receive a counsel from other person. When someone speak a good counsel, as someone give a good suggestion, when someone give me a good word, are you really humble enough to receive the counsel? Ananias was praying in the presence of God. Ananias received a word from the Lord. When Ananias speak to Saul, Saul, are you willing to receive the word from Ananias? When Ananias, a preacher, willing to walk into your house, are you willing to allow Ananias to lay hands on you and pray? Many times in our life, we are not able to experience a deliverance because we are not humble enough to allow someone else counsel in our life. Try to learn from other people's failures. It is the best teacher. Study the other people's life so you can take victory without going through the same step. Here you will see Jesus told Ananias, Ananias, you go. He told Paul, Saul, Saul, Ananias will come, lay hands on you. He was willing, he was submissive and willing to receive a counsel from Ananias. It is very interesting. Acts chapter 9, verse 7 says, The men who were accompanying him were unable to speak. Hearing the voice, but seeing no one. I want you to picture this, visualize this. Saul is and his friends on horses, going to house to house, cities to city, 
torturing and persecuting people. Lightning struck. They all fell down. They all heard something. Did not see it. Only Saul see. His life changed. No other person's life changed. His life changed. No one else followed him. They all left. Saul alone. What happened to other people? Bible doesn't say it, so I don't know. When he studied the passage, Saul decided to sit in the presence of God because Saul has a vision from the Lord. Others might misunderstand you. Other people might not understand you why you are doing it. Your friends will question you. His friends will walk away from you. Other people who were your the store until that time loved him. There will be time in your life people will walk away from you. There will be time in your life when you decide to sit and pray in the presence of God for a breakthrough in your life. Your friends might walk away. Families might walk away. Your own relatives will reject you. Maybe there are friends and the workplace and jobs and career might reject you because you have decided to do and follow Jesus. So, when he decided to sit in the presence of God to see and uh, to see his eyes open, others misunderstand you. Let others misunderstand you. Let others say things about you. Let others make stories about you. Let others say you are a fool. My friend, it doesn't really matter. Other people's opinion doesn't really count because you are the one need a deliverance in your life. Your family need a deliverance. God has a purpose for you. God has a calling for you. God wanted to speak to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Allow Jesus to speak to you. Other people will misunderstand you, but that's okay when Jesus understands you. Bible says, and he has walked into his place and prayed over him, and, uh, and his eyes were open. My friend, today, God wants to deliver you. Fasting and prayer will open the eyes of the blind. Fasting and prayer will help us to see the future. Fasting and prayer will open the eyesight so we can see a clear vision what will take place. My prayer is for you, yes. If your future is stuck and you cannot see anything in future, let Jesus Christ become your Lord and He give you an anointing and He give you a blessing of His presence of Holy Spirit to come into your life and open your eyes so you are able to experience God's deliverance. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, just like a sword, we come to you today in this fasting and prayer. And I pray in the name of Jesus. Everyone who listen to this broadcast, let them experience your presence in a tangible way. Their eyesight to be open and have a clear vision so they will be able to see God's blessings in their life. God, and I bless your people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Master, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for taking time. I'm reading from the book of First Samuel chapter 7. First Samuel chapter 7. If you have a Bible, open your Bible. First Samuel chapter 7. Verses 2 onwards. It was a long time, 20 years in all, that the ark remained in Kiriat, uh, uh, Jerim, and all the people of Israel mourned and sought at the Lord. And the Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, If you are returning to the Lord with all your heart, then rid yourself of the foreign guards and the asteroids and commit yourself to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites put away their bows and asherahs and served the Lord early. Then saw Samuel said, Assemble all Israel in Mizpah, and I will intercede with the Lord for you. 
When they had assembled in Mizpah, they drew waters and poured it out before the Lord. On that day, they fasted and they, are, they, they confessed. We have sinned against the Lord, and Samuel was a leader of Israel at Mizpah. When Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mizpah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. And when the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They, they said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord, our God for us, and he may rescue us from the hand of Palestine. Then Samuel took the sucking lamb and offered it up as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. Verse 10, while Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Palestine drew near to engage Israel in battle. But that day, the Lord thundered with the loud thunder against the Palestine and threw them into such a panic that they were routed before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out to Mizpah and pursued the Palestine, slaughtering them along the way uh, to point uh, below Beth Car. Here, Samuel is fasting. And Israelites also came together as fasting. If you study the history of Israel, if you study the history of any nation, when we look back to the history, you will find that time after time, God sent a revival. In American history, any time a spiritual weakening took place, when people walked away from God, became so materialistic in every culture, any time and season. Years after years, you will see that. Incident after incident in the history, you will see God sent awakening to this nation. All this awakening and all these revivals took place because some people decided to take fast and pray. My friend, if you are looking for a revival in your life, if you are looking for a move of God in your life, if you are sick and tired of the situation you are in, you might be cursing yourself and you might be looking yourself and say there is no hope in my situation. My counsel to you today is uh, take some time in fasting and prayer just like Samuel has decided. 20 years they were now serving God. For many years, you can see there 20 years, then they will, if you study the passage, many years of prior, they were now seeking God. Palestines were oppressing the other nations, they were oppressing people of Israel. Samuel decided, Samuel decided to, uh, to call it fasting. My friend, I, I, you must take initiative, some of you, if you need a breakthrough in your home, if you need a breakthrough in your church, if you need a breakthrough in your, uh, in your community, if you need a breakthrough in your land, in your nation, in your country, it is time for you and uh, I to spend some time in fast and prayer. Fasting works. American history clearly teaches that. Great awakening in your place. Even recently you can see God moved to this land in a greater level through fasting and prayer of the people of God. Churches called the fast. Leaders called the fast. And people decided we are going to spend some time in fasting and prayer. Did not fast as a ritual. Do not just uh, uh, fast because uh, it is a routine. No, no. That doesn't do any good. Revival will take place when you fast and pray. You must recognize, you need to realize it. It is not me. I cannot bring anything. Only God can bring revival. 
God has to intervene. God has to come. God has to come. God has to move. God has to move into the nation, into the houses, into the people. You will not be able to reach and bring a deliverance to your children. You might not be able to do anything. In that situation, God can speak to their life and bring a revival. Maybe you are praying for your son or a daughter. Maybe you are praying for your husband or a wife. And you must be asking God, how can I experience a deliverance in that situation? My friend, you will not be able to do it. But God can do with the fasting and prayer. God will be able to bring deliverance. Yes, God will can do it. And God wanted to do it. It is God that brings revival to people. It is God that brings a, a, a heart of repentance. Bible clearly teaches that Holy Spirit uh, 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 remind people about their sin and they will come back to God. Whenever there is a fasting, you will see an experience of revival, a renewal in their life. It is so wonderful. You must understand you are under bondage. First thing you need to do is confess your sin. Confess any sins that is in our life. We must confess before we fast and pray. In this particular fast, you will see if we, they, they are praying for the presence of God. We need the presence of God. You must take time to pray for the presence of God. You might be saying God is powerful. God is everywhere. Yes, God is omnipotent. He is everywhere. He is omnipresent. He is all powerful. He is omnipresent. He is all everywhere. It is true. He is almighty God. He is omnipresent and all God are omnipotent. But that doesn't mean his ministry will work in our life until we submit to the power of the kingdom of God. God has the power. God is willing. But am I willing? Are you willing to experience it? The first thing you and I need to do is recognize the presence of God. Bible says 20 years this ark was not there. It was a long time, 20 years in all, and that the ark remained in Kiryat the Jerim. Twenty years is there. And Samuel said, I need to have the presence of God in my life. They gathered together in Mizpah Bible says. My friend, presence of God is important. Do you experience the God's presence? Are you able to experience the God's presence in a tangible way? Are you just uh, are doing some religious rituals? Or are you just uh, following something? Uh, are you, uh, when you read the Bible, does that speak to you? When you pray, can you hear the voice of God? Or can you see or experience Him in your heart? You might be a Christian. You might see, you might see God's presence in many ways. But I want to remind you, seek the presence of God, have a desire and a passion for God's presence. In fasting prayer, in this particular season of fasting, when you decided to sit in the presence of God, my friend, my friend, it is important. It is very interesting, you can see in this passage, verse 6 says, we have our uh, in Mizpah. When Palestine heard that Israelites, Israelites had assembled in Mizpah. When I studied the passage, when I looked at it, what is Mizpah? What is Mizpah? Mizpah, I hope. You will see. Book of Genesis chapter 31, verse 49. Let me read that to you. Genesis chapter 31, verse 49. And the pillar or monument was called Mizpah, wax post. For he, Laban said, may the Lord watch before between you and me when we are absent and he turned one from another. Let me give you a little background of this passage. Jacob and Laban. You might know the story of Jacob very well. Jacob, a man called by God. Jacob, a man 
destined by God for a purpose. But he was away from the will of God, away from the purpose of God, working for Laban for many years, 20 years. 20 years that he was taking care of his sheep. Away from everything. And one day he decided, I want to move forward and with the destiny which God called me to do. And Jacob ran away from Laban with all his sheep and all his wealth and his family. Bible says they came to Mizpah while he, they, he was in Mizpah. Laban came, his uncle came and they, God told uh, uh, Laban, Laban, do not do anything good or evil to Jacob. So when they both came in Mizpah, at that Mizpah they decided, they both came to an agreement. We will not, I will not do any harm to you. And Laban said, and Jacob and Laban made an agreement. We will not go back. We will go one way and you will go other way. You will not go together. You, I will go to the destiny which God called me to do. Mizpah is a place, a watchtower, reminding ourselves, move forward to, for the destiny which God called us to do. Enemy cannot come past Mizpah. God told uh, Laban, Laban, you cannot go anymore, any further, any further from Mizpah to attack Jacob. Same way. In Mizpah, when the people of Israel gathered together, God, uh, Samuel called the people of Israel, come to Mizpah, sit here, and we're going to fast here. It reminds us and watched our, our great, great, great grandfather, Jacob, uh, when he was running away from Laban, he made a decision in Mizpah to God and in front of God to Laban. Laban, you cannot pass Mizpah to attack me and to, fo to follow me. Here, we're going to come back again in this fall to make a covenant with the God in the presence of God. Fast and pray. Take victory in the place. Mizpah is needed in your life. Mizpah is important in your life. Mizpah is a place you decided in fasting prayer, just like Samuel fast and prayed at that time. Hallelujah. Bible says, Palestine gathered together. What do you need to do in this fall? In this fasting and prayer, which you want a revival, which I want and need a revival in my life and your life. But it is necessary to have a fasting prayer for a revival. In this fast, number one, you need to call people together. Everyone needs to come together, whoever can. Call them, let them come. Call your family, let them come. Call your relatives, let them come. Call the gathering, call the community, let them come. Call the nation, let them come. Hundred percent might not come, but there are people who are seeking, who are looking and to see the move of God in their life, they will come. But our responsibility call them. Samuel called everyone to come, they came. Then the Bible says they repent their sin. It is very important to repent our sin. My friend, even though you might sin, as you might ask yourself person, even though you might confess your sin before, there are situations and sin that comes into our life. So when we come to the presence of God, it is important to confess our sin. They confess the sin. Backsliders need to come back to God. People of God need to come back to God. When we come back to God, God will start to minister to us. As a nation, as a family, or as an individual. When we confess our sin, God will answer our prayer. Then the Bible says, when the Palestine heard that Israelites have assembled in Mizpah, the rulers of Palestine came up to attack them. And when the Israelites heard it, they are afraid. My friends, when you sit and fast and pray, the enemy will come. While they were fasting and praying in Mizpah, the Palestine came. Bible says verse 10, while Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Palestine drew near to engage Israel in a battle. 
But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, I thank God for the word. When he fasted and prayed, when, when Samuel came and fasted and prayed, when Samuel sacrificed, he says he sacrificed. He sacrificed, he gave it to the Lord, he burned offering, consumed a full surrender in the presence of God. When she surrendered, Palestine came, Bible says, Lord, send a thunder. Lord, send a thunder and a lightning upon the people of Israel and the panic came to their life. My friend, when you cannot do this battle, when you cannot see any I pray through in your life, when you cannot see a revival in your home, in your personal life, in your land, in your country, in your community, in your churches, in your families, it is time when you seek the face of God, confess your sin and come to this far and cry out to God, God will send the lightning to the enemy and and they will disappear and God will bring a revival to you. Bible says that there was a great move of God there and the enemy were scattered and the enemy were afraid and the sun were ruled there for many years. My friend, God wanted to bring a revival to your personal life. God wanted to bring a revival to your family. God wanted to bring a revival to your church. Stop complaining and stop criticizing. See the face of God. Come to this spot and cry out to God and God wanted to deliver you and God wanted to touch you and God wanted to bless your family. There is a destiny for you. There is a purpose for you. There is a plan for you. And God is looking to some people like Samuel. Are you willing to come to Mizpah and kneel down in the presence of God? Call it fast and cry out to God and confess the sin of God. When you do that, God will work in your life. God wanted to touch you. God wanted to heal you. Don't just look for a healing in your physical body. And God has wanted to deliver you completely and put your name in the book of life and bring every Bible into your life and give a life again and have a destiny and purpose which God planned in your life. God will release that upon your life. Today, my prayer is just like a Samuel prayed, just like a Samuel gathered in this fall. Hallelujah, my friend. Let's come to the presence of God. Come together and cry out to God, whatever you are going through in your life, whatever situation you are, you are going through, are you sick and tired of the situation? It is time to seek the face of God and cry out to God, God, I need a deliverance today. In the name of Jesus, I have decided to sit and fast and pray. The prayer works, my friend. Fasting works, my friend. I have seen it in my life. I have seen it numerous times in my life. Fasting and prayer works. When Samuel prayed and fasted, God delivered him and his whole nation. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. God wanted to bless you. God wanted to catch you. God wanted to revive you. Do not just to sit there and, uh, and uh, satisfy the way you are. Don't just to satisfy the oppression of the enemy. Don't just to satisfy the, the status quo, the level you are in right now. It is time to seek the face of God. My friend, let me pray for you before I finish. Whatever you are facing in your life, if you are expecting a revival, if you seek the revival in your life, let me pray for you. Look at me. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. And I bring this listeners into a hand of God. Maybe they are looking for a revival. Maybe they are looking for a revival in their land. Maybe they are looking for a revival in their church. Maybe they were looking for a revival in their home. And I pray. Holy Spirit, rise up some great samples to sit in the presence of God, confess the thing and cry out for God's move in their life. My Thank you for listening to Walk in the Light with Ben Thomas. You'll be able to get more of Pastor Ben's teaching from www.qcog.org or benthomas.tv. Have a blessed day.